Hello and a warm welcome to MLC TV News R, reaching you live from the city of Lokoja, the conflict state of Nigeria. I am Matai Azayodeji Peter. First off, the headlines. Nobody will be allowed to destabilize Nigeria, says President Muhammad Buhari. Osibanjo received ICC persecutor at Aso Villa, comments proposed reforms at international court. Ukraine war. Kiev's allies pledge more weapons to help win war. And Afghan qualifiers, Eagles draw Sierra Leone, Guinea-Bissau, and Sao Tome. Now on the news in detail. The President Muhammad Buhari on Tuesday in Abuja urged Nigerians to resist agents bent on causing breakdown of law and order in the country, assuring them that no individual or group will be allowed to destabilize Nigeria. President Buhari said this at an iftar dinner with state governors, ministers, and aid of government agencies. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishino, disclosed this in a statement titled, Nobody will be allowed to destabilize Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari vows, made available to journalists. Buhari would thank the governors and ministers for honoring his invitation to break the Ramadan fast with him, expressed the confidence that, in spite of the current security challenges, the country will succeed. On the forthcoming general elections, he affirmed that being a beneficiary of free, fair and credible elections, the introduction of technology and the permanent voters card will make it impossible for anyone to claim millions of votes again in the country. Vice President Yemi Osibanjo on Tuesday in Abuja said the move by the International Criminal Court to reform its system as part of efforts to mend relations with African countries is a welcome development and a crucial moment for the continent. According to a statement signed by the Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President of Media and Publicity, Lao Lua Kondi, Osiba just stated this when he received a court visit to the presidential villa by the persecutor of the International Criminal Court, Karim Khan, who was on a visit to the country. The Vice President commends the proposed reforms at international courts. He also said the proposal to reform the international justice system would reassure African countries that there is room for negotiation and that the ICC is not just out to which aren't any individual or organization. He noted that it is important to create a system that builds relationship and credibility amongst member states, creating a sense that everyone can be treated fairly. Commending the courts for making the bold move, the VC said the step that the court has taken is very crucial for Nigeria and they will get the cooperation at the end of the day. The people feel that the system is just and fair to all. Earlier in his remarks, the visiting ICC persecutor Khan expressed excitement at the visit, noting that it comes at a crucial time in the history of the continent, acknowledging Nigeria's role in Africa. Khan explained that the courts, through the proposed roadmap, for reforms will assist African countries to achieve justice, applying the principle of complementarity. He pledged the commitment of the court to work with local authorities to encourage domestic jurisdictions to investigate and persecute perpetrators of core international crimes. Aside the ICC officials on the entourage of the persecutor, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Geoffrey Onyema, and Nigerian's ambassador to the Netherlands, Eniola Ajayi, were present at the meeting. Earlier, the vice president received the Egyptian ambassador to Nigeria, Ihab Howard, who came to brief him on the next meeting of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to be hosted in Sham El Sheikh, Egypt, later in November this year. In his remarks, Osibanjo noted that with the meeting holding in Africa, leaders of the continent should ensure that the conversation on climate change goes the way they want it to go. Adding that the developmental challenges are existential as the climate change concerned itself. Some senior advocates of Nigeria, the pan yoruba Social political group Afeni Ferry and the Imo state governor Op Uzodima on Tuesday faulted the call by a legal luminary chief Afe Babalola San for the suspension of the 2023 general election and the installation of an interim government in 2023. The legal luminary had at a press conference on Monday asked the election be suspended until a new constitution was put in place. He also advocated for an interim government to replace the regime of Muhammadu Buhari in 2023. But some senior lawyers faulted Babalola. Although the senior lawyers agreed that there was a need for a new constitution, they added that having an interim government in place would not augur well for the country. Tayo Oyetibo said an interim government would destabilize the polity. 
it stated that it thinks Nigeria needs a stable political environment and an interim government is unstable. Uzo Dima on his part said the 1999 constitution lacked room for an interregnum. The governor stated by May 29, if there is no elected government, our 1999 constitution has not provided for an interregnum. There shouldn't be a gap, otherwise you are creating room for anarchy. Reacting to a question about the recent killing of a staff member of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Imo State, Uzo Dima explained that INEC was not the initial target. Although Afeni Ferry agreed with Babarola over the bad situation of the country, it nevertheless said it was not in support of the interim government. The National Publicity Secretary of Afeni Ferry, Jari Ajayi, who conveyed the position of the group in a statement, stated that Babarola made the suggestion due to the frustration being experienced by Nigerians. The statement read in part, While Afeni Ferry acknowledged the enormity of the problems, we do not support the cancellation or postponement of the scheduled elections. The Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman al Kalibaba, has confirmed the appointment of CSP or Lumuiwa Adejobi as the new first public relations officer. CSP Adejobi was appointed in acting capacity on 16 February 2022 after taking over from CP Frank Kumba, who was nominated by the Inspector General of Police for the senior executive course at the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Study. Kuru Joss. With his confirmation, CSP Olumu Iwadi Jobi becomes the 25th indigenous force PRO. He has a long stint as police public relations officer in Ogun State Police Command from 2008 to 2016. He also served as PPRO Zone 2 headquarters on Econ Lagos in 2016 and PPRO Lagos State Police Command between September 2020 and August 2021 when he was posted to deputize the former force PRO CP Frank Kumba. In all, CSP Adejobi has served as PPRO in different police command and zone for more than a decade. He is expected to bring experience to bear in his new office as the first PRO. CSP Olumuiwa studied archaeology and geography combined honors from University of Ibadan. He holds a master's degree in peace and conflict studies from the same university. He is a member of several professional bodies and associations, which include Nigerian Institute of Public Relations and the Institute of Corporate Administrations, Nigeria. Two officers feared dead on Tuesday evening in a Nigerian Air Force trainer plane crashed Kaduna State. The two pilots on board are believed to be dead, according to sources. The Super Mushak, a trainer aircraft, crashed near Kaduna while on a training trip. According to sources, the plane crashed within a NAF based in Kaduna State. Air Cadet Edward Cabwet, the NAF Director of Public Relations and Information, did not answer to leadership requests for confirmation of the incident. Now on politics. Every country has its peculiar system of government. In Nigeria, we practice democracy, and this is applicable in some countries across the globe, including the United States of America. What is democracy? It is the government of the people, by the people and for the people. In the political arena, we are ready to explain how we play politics in Nigeria and other countries. The challenge of power shift syndrome, how it has impacted or affected the people. How can we make it better for all? Join Fatima Yaqub on Melkite TV online every Saturday by 9 p.m. to discuss and to examine all about the politics and the power that be. Mr. President, I was once there as an opposition senator. There was never a time that we called the president at that time, who was a PDP president, an insult because this is our institution. And if we don't conduct ourselves with dignity and respect, nobody will respect us. The heads of security in Nigeria made several different explanations for killings of our citizens. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I hereby forward for the, for the confirmation by the Senate the appointment of the underlisted nominees as National Commissioners and Resident Electoral Commissioner for the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. To watch or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Melkai TV, like our Facebook page, MLC TV, and follow us on our Instagram, MLC TV 2021. We are here to inform, educate, and to criticize constructively. Don't miss it.
presidency and the office of the secretary to the government of the federation on Tuesday passed the buck over the refusal of ministers, ambassadors and aides to the president to resign ahead of the governorship and presidential primaries of the All Progressive Congress, which commenced on May 25th. This is just as the Minister of Labor and Employment, Chris Ngige, on Tuesday declared his intention to contest the presidential election. Just like the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, who joined the presidential race last week, Ngige also refused to resign. A senior official at the presidential villa told newsmen that the SGF boss Mustafa ought to have issued a circular stating a deadline on when appointees of the president, Muhammadu Buhari, should resign. The official noted that across the 36 states, the secretary to the state government are the ones issuing circulars and guidelines for appointees seeking elective office. However, an aide to the SGF told journalists that as an appointee of the president himself, it was not the job of Mustafa to issue such directive unless it was ordered by the president to do so. Buhari had while signing the electoral bill in February expressed reservations over section 8412 of the act which mandates all political appointees seeking elective office to resign ahead of any party primary they plan to participate in. The president, while insisting that the provision was at variance with the constitution, specifically asked the Senate President Ahmed Lawan and the Speaker Femi Bajabia Miller to ensure that the section in question be deleted. He subsequently wrote to the National Assembly requesting the amendment. The president's request was, however, rejected. Leader of Yoruba Social Political Group, Afeni Ferry, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, has said that presidential aspirants from the Southwest Geopolitical Zone, including Vice President Yemi Usibanjo and former Lagos State Governor Bola Tinobu, should forget their presidential ambitions. He said it was the turn of the Southeast to produce Nigeria's next president after the regime of President Muhammadu Buhari in May 2023. The other statement made his position known in an exclusive interview on Tuesday. According to him, it is an injustice for a Southwest president to emerge in 2023 after ex-president Olusegun Obasanjo from Ogo State had ruled from 1999 to 2007, while Vice President Yemi Osebanjo, also from Ogun State, had been in government since May 2015 and would have spent eight years in power by May 2023. The 94-year-old Eda statesman added that the South-South Zone has also had a shot at both president and vice president positions with ex-president Goodluck Jonathan between 2007 and 2010 as VP and from 2010 to 2015 as president. Adiban Joaeva said, for Nigeria to have another president, the country must first be secured. The Nunangarian said, right now, is there a country for them to be president? There must be one country first before you can talk of an election. Is this the country Jonathan handed over to Buhari? Whether a southern or a northern candidate, let us unite everyone. We can't get everyone united until we change this constitution. The All Progressive Congress Tuesday in Abuja said it would not hand its presidential ticket to anyone who does not prioritize the welfare of women. The party's national women leader, Dr. Betty Edu, disclosed this to Women Mobilization OP23 Yayabelo campaign organization when the group paid a visit to Buari's house, the National APC Secretariat, Abuja. She urged the women to, as part of their campaign, harp on the registration, adding that electorates cannot enforce their mandate at the poll next year without PVC. She argued that all aspirants who have so far declared for the presidency are far above the board and qualified to lead the country. In her address, the director of Women Mobilization OP23 Yaya Belo campaign organization, Zara Oyinye, said candidates who empower women stand a greater chance to win the presidential elections. If you are just joining us, this is MLC TV News R. We'll be right back after the short break. Welcome back. Now on crime. The Delta State Police Command has arrested some suspected robbers, a serial car snatcher, among other suspects in different parts of the state. The State Police Public Relations Officer DSP Bright Edafi disclosed this on Tuesday in Asaba, the state capital. He said on Easter Sunday, information got to the command that a group of suspected courtists and armed robbers were hibernating at the Eloke Hotel in a cellar Azagba. 
being their meeting points before carrying out their operations. Intelligence further revealed that the syndicate monitor to know if the police are closing up on them and that whenever they suspect anything, they throw their guns from the window of the hotel and run away. The PPIO said the command also arrested a 57-year-old serial car snatcher. According to him, on Easter Sunday, the command received a distress call from a motorist that his Toyota Camry car was snatched around 2 p.m. in O2 Jeremy community of Ugeli South local government. Edafi said information was disseminated through the command's control room to all divisional police officers and patrol team to be on the lookout with a view to recovering the vehicle. Consequently, on Monday, April 18, 2022, around 6.30 p.m., the anti-crime patrol of the Uguashi Uku police station, while on a routine stop and search duty along Kwale Uguachi Uku Expressway by Olo Uguachi community intercepted the said Toyota Camry. The police spokesperson said the occupant, who happened to be the driver of the vehicle, upon sighting the police, abandoned the car and took to his heels. At least five people have been killed and 19 others seriously injured in a blast in Taraba State in northeast Nigeria. The explosion on Tuesday evening occurred at a bar in Iware, a busy commercial center near the state capital Jalingo. Police spokesperson Abdullah Usman said one suspected attacker had died, but it wasn't clear whether it was a suicide bomber. Eyewitnesses said the explosive was inside a bag that was hidden at the bar. Iware is a major market town where traders from different parts of the country buy and sell livestock and foodstuffs. In 2012, three suicide bombers on motorcycles rammed the convoy of a local police chief. At at least 11 people, including the attackers, died in the blast which was blamed on Islamic militant group Boko Haram. Taraba state borders Adamawa state in the northeast and neighboring Cameroon. It has previously been spared the insurgency plaguing Ni Nigeria's northeast. Now on our foreign news. Australia, New Zealand and the U.S. have raised concern on security in the Pacific after China signed a security pact with the Solomon Islands. The deal was signed this week, foiling fear China may seek to build a naval base in the Pacific nation. The Solomon Islands had rebuffed last-ditch efforts by Australia, its biggest aid donor, to stop the deal. Prime Minister Manasseh Sogavare said the pact would not undermine peace and harmony in the region. The Solomon Islands leader added that the pact was not aimed at traditional allies, but rather at their own internal security situation. It did not disclose the pact terms, but insisted that it was made with their eyes wide open, guided by their national interest. A leaked draft of the agreement, which was verified by the Australian government, said Chinese warship will be permitted dock on the islands and that Beijing could send security forces to assist in maintaining social order. The islands have been reef with social unrest in recent years, and in November, the Australian government sent personnel from its defense forces to help quell deadly riots in the capital, Hainoria. Sparked after protesters stormed parliament in a bid to topple Sogavare, a spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry confirmed on Tuesday that the final agreement had retained the provision on maintaining social order. Australian Foreign Minister Maris Pine and Pacific Minister Zay Seseja called the freshly signed deal deeply disappointing, saying they were concerned about the lack of transparency with which their disagreements had been developed. Australia's Labour opposition called it the worst failure of Australian foreign policy in the Pacific in 80 years. Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who is currently campaigning for re-election in part of a platform of national security, denied that the pact was proof that his government had boggled his diplomacy with the Solomon Islands. He added that he could not have gone around telling leaders in Pacific Island what they should and shouldn't do. But Morrison said his country would not have a submissive relationship with China, which he said he made all sorts of promises to Pacific nations. Ukraine's allies have pledged to send more support to help it defend against a renewed Russian offensive. The U.S. and others vowed to send artillery, anti-tank and air defense aid to Kyiv during a 90-minute video call on Tuesday. Ukraine said it needs a weapon to help defend itself as Russia launched a new campaign in the country's east. Clashes there have marked what Ukraine leader Volodymyr Zelensky said was the start of the battle for the Donbass. The eastern Donbass, which comprises the Loask and Donetsk region, is where Russia is concentrating its efforts. 
It was amidst this renewed attack that Western leaders met to discuss further military assistance for Ukraine. Following the meeting, the U.S. Defense Department said additional military aircraft and aircraft parts has been sent to Ukraine to increase their fleet size and repair orders in Ukraine's arsenal that were damaged. The U.S. Defense Department added that the U.S. had not provided aircraft to Kyiv itself and did not provide details on which countries have provided the aircraft. President Zelensky has been appealing to the U.S. for Soviet-made air defense system and fighter jets as an alternative to a no-fly zone over Ukraine. Last month, the U.S. refused a proposal by Poland to provide it with MIG-29 fighter jets, which it would then transfer to Ukraine. President Joe Biden, speaking to reporters after the meeting between Western allies, added that the U.S. is planning to provide a further military aid package to Ukraine of a similar size to the $800 million aid package he announced last week. According to U.S. warfare, he said Washington will also be sending Ukraine more artillery, heavy guns deployed in land warfare. Other countries also pledged to help Ukraine with further military assistance during the meeting. Let's join Jonah Malik for our sports update. And on sports update, three-time African champions Nigeria reappeared on Tuesday with Sri Lanka, Guinea-Bissau, and Sao Tome and Principe in Group A of the qualifiers for the 2023 African Cup of Nations. The 34th edition of the Biennial African Football Showcase is scheduled to hold from June 23 to July 24, 2023 in Ivory Coast. The draw ceremony, which served up plenty of interesting matchups, took place on Tuesday evening at the Super Sports Studio in Johannesburg, South Africa. A total of 48 countries, including host Ivory Coast, are eligible to feature in the final stage of the qualifier schedule to begin in June across the continent. The 48 teams were drawn into 12 groups of four teams, Group A to Group L, with the top two teams from each group qualifying for the tournament to be played in the West African country. The Super Eagles face familiar foes in Syria alone, who they also faced during the qualifiers for the 2021 edition, and Guinea-Bissau, their opponent at the 33rd AFCON in Cameroon earlier this year. Reacting to the draws, Atlanta Olympic gold medalist Abiodun Obafemi and under-17 World Cup winner Dele Ajiboye admitted that the Eagles were handed a tricky draw. And straight to Europe, Fulham were promoted back to the Premier League on Tuesday with four games to spare as Alexander Mitrovic scored twice in a 3-0 win over Preston at Craven Cottage. It is the fifth consecutive season the Cottagers have changed divisions as they were also promoted in 2018 and 2020 before being relegated in their first season back in the top flight. However, in contrast to their need to go via the playoffs two years ago, Marco Silva's men have been the best side in the championship by a distance this season. Mitrovic has been the major reason why the Serb took a stally to an incredible 40 goals in 40 league games this season with a first half double. Liverpool bound Fabio Cavajo was also on target as Fulham also closed in on sealing the championship title. They lead Bournemouth by 9 points with 5 games left for the Cheerios to catch them. And that's Sport Update on MLC TV News. My name is Jonah Malik. Back to our casters for more stories. Thanks, Jonah, for the update. Now on our entertainment news. Nigerian singer Bonner Boy sold out the 17,000 capacity dome in Amsterdam when he held his Space Drift concert, which started on Thursday, April 14th. 16,500 fans of the African giant Krona joined him in the dome as he performed to their satisfaction during his two-day concert. To celebrate Bonaboy's achievement, the management of the facility presented a special plague artwork to him. Zigo Dome is an indoor arena in Amsterdam, Netherlands. It is named after the Dutch cable TV provider Zigo. 
Bonner Boy has been on a European tour for a while now. He has already performed in Geneva, Switzerland, and other countries where he performed the remix of Black Sheriff's Second Salmon. In less than two weeks, he will perform at Madison Square in New York, United States. He will continue his European tour from June to August. Still on our entertainment news, Nigerian comedian and actor Julius Agu was among the guests that graced Rita Dominic's wedding. The star-studded wedding took place on Tuesday, April 19, 2022, in Owere, Imo State. The comedian dressed in the matching Ashoi B of the day was spotted all smiles as he took pictures with other celebrities at the wedding ceremony. This will be Agu's first public outing since his rumored failing health. The comedian was reported to falling ill again after years of battling a reoccurring illness. It was also reported that the comedian's wife, Ibere, had packed out of their matrimonial home following the reports of his relapse and infidelity. It was alleged that Ibere dumped the comedian for another man. Agu has been plagued by illness for so many years. According to several reports, the illness had eaten deep into the once wealthy comedian's pocket. Agu attempted to resurrect his career in 2020 by holding another edition of Crack Your Ribs, his annual comedy show, and announced his plan to commemorate 25 years in comedy. Unfortunately, that dream was never realized. The comedian and his wife married on May 31, 2008, and have two children, Zara and Zadok. And that is the size of our package today. Join us tomorrow at the same hour to watch our news as we give you updates on happenings within and across the globe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Malakai TV. Like and follow our Facebook page, MLC TV. Instagram, MLC TV 2021. Twitter at MLC TV 1. For your event coverage, Information, contribution, advert and sponsorship, please call any of our numbers displayed on your screen. Join us Friday and Saturday to watch our special programs. Friday 9 p.m. Local Government and You. Saturday 7 p.m. Family Affairs. 9 p.m. Political Arena. And Women's Ward Sunday by 6 p.m. It's Malachi TV. Reaching everywhere, informing everyone. I am Matthias Ayodeji Peter. Please continue to be your brother's keeper to build a united and peaceful society together. Thank you. Goodbye.